Hey everybody and welcome to another video and on today it's going to be pretty much solely about star photo editing and I'm going to show you this straw file right here which I took in the Swiss mountains and I'm going to show you how I turn it into a picture like this you know way more punchy and great and all of that stuff and show you off the sliders along with that but before I do that I want to thank Luminar for sponsoring this video Luminar is a photo editing program, you can use it as plugin or standalone, it has layers and planning modes and Orton effect and all of that stuff, so if you're interested, check out the link in the video description below. Anyway, so let's get started here with the editing, and you know, before I do that, I want to talk about the settings here. I shot this with a kit lens on a Canon 600D, it was like 6am in the morning, as you can see the stars are incredibly crisp, it was winter in a Swiss mountain village, so this is definitely the best star picture that I've ever gotten. And if you look at the settings here, 25 seconds, you really don't want to go much longer than that. F4.5, that's definitely not ideal. You want to shoot star pictures as wide as possible, so like F2.8, F2, F1.4, even better. But F4.5 is quite, quite dark. And then ISO is also only 3200, so it was incredibly clear, but at the same time, I still have to make it a little bit better and, you know, punch and all of that stuff. So let's get started here by bringing up to whites. Now, the thing here also is that I have this mountain in the foreground. It's also illuminated by some light from the early morning, very subtle, and I absolutely love it. You want to balance, if you have a foreground element, which of course adds a lot to your picture, you want to balance it with the rest of the picture. So you, first of all, what I re would recommend you to do is just kind of start off with the basic adjustments and then do all of that stuff that you can there and use a graduated filter later on to do all of this adjustment specifically for the stars. All right, so after bringing up the whites, I'm also gonna bring up the highlights, bring down the shadows a little bit, and that is so I can actually bring down the blacks without making everything too contrasting crazy. Now, clarity works super well bringing that to the right for the stars, although for the foreground, again, I can't really bring it up too far, otherwise it will just completely ruin that mountain. And you know what, before I go into the color temperature, I quickly want to go into the detail because you can see there's a lot of noise, especially after editing such a high ISO long exposure shot, you will get a ton of noise. But by bringing up the color noise reduction all the way to 100 and also the smoothness, you will get rid of most of the purple and green, you know, sensor noise already looks a lot better, but then you really also have to add some regular noise reduction. You don't want to bring up the noise reduction too much, otherwise it will just eat up these small stars and that's not what you want. Now sharpening is also a thing that you can just bring it to the right a little bit and bring the, the masking slider to the right while holding down the alt key. So I will bring up the masking and you know everything that is white will be sharpened, everything that is black will not be sharpened. And of course you just want the stars to be sharpened and not any of the empty space. Now going back up to the basics, there's actually another very important thing and that is the color temperature. Just to be clear here, you can bring the color temperature all the way to the right, make it very warm. It can work, especially if you have like the Milky Way, but generally speaking, it's way, way better looking if you just bring it to the left, make it a little bit more bluish. And I personally prefer to really bring it into the blues. So make it very, very concretely blue and then the tint, can either bring that very far to the right and make it, you know, very purplish. It's all up to your taste. There's really a lot of opportunity with color for star pictures. But I, I really like the crisp blue. So I'm just going to stick there and vibrance and saturation. Now, depending on what you want to go for, you might want to add something here or you might want to decrease something. I think I'm actually going to decrease it by a little bit because I don't want to bring it over the top here. And again, this is, I think it's really all I'm going to do for this um, global part. So already looks so much better, so much more punchy. And you can see the stars incredibly well compared to before. What I'm going to do now is just grab a graduated filter, bring that one over the night sky. You want to have a relatively harsh gradient. So you don't want to have it super soft because you want to have most of the sky affected. You really have to kind of play around with it, you know, depending on your actual picture. So now what I want to do just again, this will just affect the top part all of the stars and stuff. I just want to add a little bit more contrast for these, bring down the blacks by quite a bit and at the same time bring up the whites even more. You really have to be careful because it's easy to just kind of blow everything, maybe even use the highlight slider to kind of balance that brightness out. 
and then the shadows i definitely want to bring down the shadows here so you actually have some more contrast between the stars and the rest of the picture so this is before the graduated filter and then this is after the graduated filter it definitely helps with some of the contrast and again doesn't affect any of the mountain or stuff below now, at the same time though, I think the top just got a little bit too dark. So I'm just gonna add a graduated filter with plus exposure over here to kind of balance it out a bit more. Now, the thing, as you see naturally here, the, because it was early morning, it is a lot more bright down here than it is on the top. And that's actually a good thing, it adds graduation and of course with it interest, but you wanna keep it at least somewhat not too crazy. I don't know if that makes any sense, but just by using some graduated filter, you can really fine tune that and make your graduation exactly look how you want it to look like. And that's actually pretty much the major thing that I've wanted to do here. I'm going to go back into the clarity though and just bring the clarity a bit to the right. Now what clarity will do with star pictures is just bring out the stars incredibly much especially the smaller stars even though you might think it would be the best obvious choice to go to the maximum to 100 it kind of is almost a bit too much what i would recommend here is just to go to like 50 to maybe 70 but not all the way to 100 it's of course always up to you but there we really have a nice balance of enough stars while at the same time not have every single small thing and star being super pronounced in terms of the top part, maybe just add another filter real quick with uh, with just a little bit more exposure. With the actual star part, this is pretty much all I would do to it. Now, however, what I want to do real quick for the foreground, for this mountain especially, is just grab, actually let's grab another graduated filter and kind of blend it in like this. And this time go into the color to add some warm tones. Now warm tones, especially for the foreground, and especially if you make it very soft and kind of with it blend into the, to the actual sky and the stars, it can add some differentiation. Of course, you don't want to go too far or too crazy, but something like that might actually work. So yeah, I guess, well, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you for this video. It's really super easy. And as you can see, the difference is really huge. But I wanted to take another second to thank Luminar for sponsoring this video. Now, Luminar, of course, is an awesome photo editing platform. You can add your photos from start to finish in it, or you can just use it as Lightroom plugin. I really like to use it as a plugin because it allows me to do all of the general stuff in Lightroom and organize my pictures there. But then if I want to do some more advanced stuff, I can just take it into Luminar. And, you know, you can work with layers there, you can work with blending modes, you have a ton of different filters that Lightroom just doesn't have, such as the Orton Effect filter, Golden Hour filter. Uh, definitely the, 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 the Accent Slider is one of my favorites, you can just bring that a little bit to the right and it will add a lot of punch to your picture and it's so easy to do. It just allows you to do some more advanced stuff, some more editing than you could do solely in Lightroom. So if you want to check it out, the link to a 14-day free trial will be in the video description below. And, you know, you can just try it out for free. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this quick little video. If you have any suggestions about future videos I could do, leave them in the comments down below. And, you know, I'm currently working on the book video, as well as a spontaneous vlog about cityscape photography. Anyhow, take care, guys.